Welcome to our lecture online. Now let's take a look at these examples here, where in particular, when we can and cannot divide the fractions or the numerator and the denominator by 10. So here, when we look at the first one, we can see that we have 200 divided by 3,000. They both end up in a zero, which is an indication that they're both divisible by 10, but we should do it one zero at a time. So if we divide the numerator by 10, that becomes 20. If we divide the denominator by 10, it becomes 300. And so now what we essentially have at that point is we have the number 20 over the number 300. And again, you can see that on the right, both of them end up in a zero, which means we can divide by 10 again. So we can get rid of this zero and this zero. And so this then becomes the fraction two divided by 30. Now notice, even though we can no longer divide by 10, they're both even. Since they're both even, we can divide both of them by the number 2. And we end up with 1 divided by 15. But the key here is, when we look at this in the beginning, notice we could have essentially done the following. We could have taken the number 200 divided by 3,000, because essentially that's what a fraction is. It's basically division. We can say we can divide the numerator by 10 twice, we can divide the denominator by 10 twice, and we end up with 2 divided by 30, and then we would continue to simplify that. Now take a look at the second fraction. Again, they both end up in a 0, so we can divide both the numerator and the denominator by 10. And so now we end up with 109 divided by 200. You might be tempted to cross this 0 out and this 0 out, but you cannot do that. You need to start from the back, so you cannot arbitrarily pick a 0 there and pick a 0 there and cancel that out. So essentially, if we rewrite this, you have 109 divided by 200. And now, since they both do not end up in a zero, again, it's the last digit that's important. You cannot divide both the numerator and the denominator by zero. It turns out that 109 is a prime number, so you cannot even go any further than this. If you take a look at here, again, we can apply what we used before. We can divide by 10, and then there's still a zero at the end. We can divide by 10 again. And so here, this ends up being 2 divided by 900. And since they're both even, you can then divide both by the number 2. And so this becomes 1 divided by 450, or 1 over 450. So now taking a look at the last one here, you'd be very tempted to start crossing out zeros. You have two zeros here, you have two zeros there, but you can do that. You have to start from the back, and since the very back is not a zero, they're both, both of them are not divisible by 10. The denominator is, but not the numerator. And 2001 looks like it's a prime number. That's as, that's, uh, as reduced as you can get it. Oh, wait a minute, not true. It's not a prime number. How do I know it's not a prime number? Because 2 and 1 add up to 3. That means it's divisible by 3. We can actually divide both of them by 3. So let's try that. So divide by 3 and divide by 3, like this. Of course, the denominator is easy. 3,000 divided by 3, well, that's equal to 1,000. But what about the numerator? Well, the numerator. So that looks like 660. Seven? Hmm, let's try it. 667, because 3 times 600 is 1,800. 3 times 60 is 180. That's 1980. 3 times 7 is 21. That adds up to that. Most of us will be challenged to try to take this number and divide it by 3 and come up with that number. So if you're not sure how to do that, it's perfectly fine to grab your calculator, or it's perfectly fine to do longhand division. So let's go ahead and do that. 2001. Let's divide it by 3. 3 goes into 20, 6 times, 6 times 3 is 18. That gives us a remainder of 2, drop down to 0. 3 goes into 20, 6 times, 6 times 3, that's 18. Remainder is 2, drop down to 1. 3 goes into 21, 7 times. So you can see that it doesn't take very long to do it quickly on the side, in case you're not sure how to do that in your head. So you can do that as well. So the basic line, the bottom line here is with these examples is to know when you can divide by 10 and when you can not divide by 10. Notice that you need to start from the back and move forward one set of zeros at a time. So here you can see that's divisible by, by 10. There it's divisible by 10 again. And here you can no longer divide by 10. Notice here you can only do it once. 
Once the last number is no longer zero, either in the numerator or the denominator, you cannot proceed with dividing by 10. And if you have something that, that's like this in the first place, you cannot even start, even though all those zeros are very tempting, you cannot divide by 10, and you have to look for other rules to try to reduce the fraction if possible. But notice the difference, notice when you can divide by 10, and when, when notice when you cannot divide by 10. And that's how it's done.